Well, good morning and welcome once again to Ed's Orchids. Now, uh, you know me, I'm a great one for experimenting in, uh, in different ways, non-scientific. It's just a uh, little experimentation. And uh, I got thinking about uh, compost. And uh, I started thinking about the plants that are imported from Malaysia and the Far East. And they always come in uh, a product made from uh, coconuts. And they always look very good. So why don't we use it over here? And what's the difference between the bark and the coconut husk? Now I've done a lot of, uh, well not a lot, I've done a bit of research and uh, it seems that a lot of people can grow in uh, coconut husk and a lot of people have problems with it. So uh, I decided to get some coconut husk which is the, uh, is the stuff you can get for uh, reptile bedding. And uh, what I've done, I've soaked it uh, a few times in fresh water to remove some of the tannins and uh, from what I've, uh, I've heard and what I've seen on YouTube is that uh, some people get growth, strange growths coming up out of the, uh, the host like mushroom type stuff. So what I've done after I've uh, assorted it several times in fresh water, I microwaved it. Then I washed it again and then I microwaved it again to kill any spores that's in. So that's what I'm, uh, that's what I'm going to do. So I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, what I did, I soaked it in the final soak in uh, 300 parts per million of phosphogen. Now it's a little bit complicated because both lignin and cellulose are found in orchids and both are uh, the main components of the cell walls. Uh, cellulose, uh, loosely explained, is the uh, inner soft part of, uh, of the plant and lignum is the harder outer part which, uh, which brings rig rigidity to the plants. And it's all very complicated how all this works. Uh, we'll not go into all that because it comes in with the uh, macerates of fungus and all that which uses the lignum and cellulose to obtain carbon for itself. Help people in the growing of orchids, not complicate things, but to give them just some information on what you're doing and why you're doing it and, uh, and see what happens from what you do. Now this is the uh, coconut husk that's, uh, that's used for uh, reptile bedding. You know, it's, it's, uh, these are the husks and there's a bit of uh, fibre in and a uh, bit of choir which I think is the uh, very fine stuff. But uh, this is it after I've uh, soaked it for a few times, soaked it in the uh, phosphogen and mi microwaved it a couple of times because uh, why I microwaved it is, is because uh, I have read from some growers that uh, they have problems using uh, coconut husk that uh, the, the, the plants started showing, uh, the plant leaves rather, started showing uh, ugly marks on it and one thing and another and they thought it was because this natural stuff hasn't been properly uh, sterilised. So that's why I, uh, I microwaved this a couple of times and uh, it's been microwaved for about 20 minutes at full power so uh, that should have killed off any spores or anything that's, uh, that's been in it. It should be beneficial, I hope. We'll see anyhow. Well now I've got to choose which uh, plants I'm going to try it out on. So I've chosen two Paphia pedlums 
that are uh, taking ages and ages. I've had these about three or four years and they're doing absolutely nothing. Uh, one's a, a, a Hangianum and the other one is unidentified and I think it's some type of uh, multifloral that I bought off uh, eBay as I said some three or four years ago and uh, I think it sent up uh, one and a half leaves since then. So these are what I'm going to do and see what happens to them. If it kills them off, it kills them off. If it makes them grow uh, well and good. Well, we'll take this puffy pedlum out of its pot. The only thing it's got on here is D-O-H, whatever that is. And uh, could have been D-O-A, I think, mean, dead on arrival. So we'll take it out, I don't know, it's never been out of its pot this for ages. So we'll just have a look, it might have no roots, I don't know. Ah, it's got some new root growth. Ah, blimey. Right, dry as a bone though, the roots. But, uh, Look at the new root growth. Well there's some nice new root growth on this and I think what's happening is to get in the new root growth and then uh, it's just drying up again. So we'll see if we can keep it nice and moist in this uh, this coconut husk. Right, we'll take the uh, hangianum out of its pot and have a look what that's like. Oh. <laughs> no new roots. You can see that four very hard small roots but no new growth on it. So we'll see how that goes in the new mix. So I'm going to uh, pop this uh, multiflorum up that has some new roots in this moist uh, uh, coconut husk I've, I've just done. But as a precaution I'm going to put some of its old bark in that it was growing. So that's what I'll do with that one. I think a mixture of the two might, uh, might be even better than uh, the full coconut husk. Oh, we'll use the same pot, get this a mixture. In fact, I might not have enough, uh, enough bark here to uh, plant it, but it might just be enough. I don't know what that is, we'll have that one out. Yeah, that seems to sit in there okay. This uh, being a little damp, it'll just give it a boost because uh, they seem to be drying out very, very quickly. Just want some more of the whole scab done in there. your fibre in as well. We'll just plant it so the base of the leaves are just uh, covered up. Well it looks fine this but uh, whether it'll be alright I've no idea. But we should know in uh, a maximum of a couple of weeks. So that's that one. We'll put this DOH label back in, and I know which is which. And then we'll do the uh, Hangianum.
Right, this is a little angianum, and uh, by looking on the leaves I can see a little bit of uh, mealybug on it. I think that might be spoiling it as well. So we'll give that a spray. This is what I use. Bug clear, it seems to do it very well. Clears on contact, it kills on contact that one. So we'll put, uh, put some husk in there. I'll be lifting up just a little bit. Excuse my hand, I'll come around this way a little bit. Make sure it's firm at the edges to hold it in place, stop it wagging around. And I think I'd better check all the buffy pedals where this was. Just to make sure that there's not a load of mealy ball hanging around. Right, that's the hanging in so put the leather back in and put that back on the shelf. I think we'll just do once more. Now I've got uh, four or five uh, uh, Farianums and this one is doing the worst of the lot. So I'm going to try that in the new mix. Just let's have a look at the uh, what's going on down here with this one. And the answer to that is not very much. One half dead root and one root there that's hard but dead on the end. That will just drop off. So I can't do any harm pulling this in here, can I? So we'll see what's going on there. So we'll put a bit of uh, ordinary bark in. And we'll put some of this uh, Come on, let me do it properly. Well, not at all. In fact, I think when these came to me, they were in a type of... Uh, type of medium like this. So uh, we'll just see how they go. You can butcher it, I can't win. Well that's another uh, experiment just started. We'll have to see what the end product's like and uh, oh yesterday I said I'd just show you this uh, Richter I didn't I? Bloom. My first frag for ages. There we are, and it's got another bud coming on the back there. Fragmapedium Richteri. Anyhow, thank you very much for watching this one. I hope it uh, might have helped somebody in some way or other. And until next time, I'll see you all later.